and you join me at Millbrook Fisheries, which is a lovely four acre day ticket water just outside Wetley Rocks. Probably around 200 fish in here. They're all heather fisheries. They are absolutely stunning. And on this session, there's two of us fishing. At Millbrook, there are 12 swims, and on this trip, there were five other anglers. They all chose to fish at the southerly end of the lake, where the fish had been showing, which left Kate and I with the choice of swims across the northerly end. What are you thinking then? We've got all this end of the lake to ourselves, it just depends which side we go for. Why do you think everybody's going the other end? Because it's a little bit shallower, mm. but it's only a foot shallower. And I know the wind's gonna push down this way. It might just blow them this way. That's the theory anyway. We decided to fish in pegs two and three on the easterly side of the lake. Because it was really starting to warm up, we wanted to get the bait in up against the top end of the island straight away, but leave the rods until later on. We are baiting up in preparation for the evening's action. <laughs> <laughs> Put a couple of rods on this tonight. Uh, my left hand rod, Kate's right hand rod. So we both got a rod on the um, baited area as such. And then I'm going to flick one down my right hand margin because I've got a lovely margin to my right hand side. We'll pop Kate's left hand rod just off because there's no one in peg four. We'll pop that just off the island with just um, a scattering of boilies around it, really. We are fishing with the oily sticks again that I was using last time on here um, to, to good success. So all rods will be fishing them. Then just really small baits, 12 millers. Sweet corn and essential cell boilies. And the reason I am fishing those two baits is because randomly Heather's Fisheries or Simos as they're more commonly known love yellow baits. A um, little bit of hemp oil in there, always put hemp oil in and that's about it really. Nothing complicated at all. So we'll see what that brings. Hopefully Kate will get a new PB or something like that. The rules at Millbrook state that guests are not allowed. So Kate decided she wanted to dust her rods off and have a go once again. It's been a long time since I've fished. I think last time I caught a carp was when we went to Angler's Paradise, the year before we got married. So it's been about nine or ten years. This is the second time I visited Millbrook Fishery and uh, the first time the ball I picked out was peg seven. Uh, the chap who was in there the night before he, he had a couple of fish from the margin so I took that on board. Conditions got cooler and cooler. At one point I was just lying in my sleeping bag it was freezing cold um, but then the, the bobby pulled up so I was lucky enough to catch a lovely 22 pound mirror. So I was made up with that. And then got the rod back out. Nothing happened all night. The chap who was in peg two, which is a peg we're in now, he was going home and he'd had a couple of fish. The wind had started pushing down this end. It was getting brighter. It just looked, it looked, it looked, it looked right, basically. It took, a little bit of thinking about because obviously I caught a fish out of peg seven. So it took me all of two or three minutes to decide no, I'm going to up sticks, move down to peg two. Got the rig sorted. Uh, I would say it took two hours until that left hand rod, which was on the bait, bobbing pulled up and we're away. Uh, I think that was a 17 pound mirror. Flicked it back out probably no more than an hour later and 
Bobby pulled up again. That one was something similar, maybe a touch smaller. Flicked it back out there. And then I'm sure it didn't take long again. It was another another hour or so, and we were away again, and I'm sure, pretty sure that was a 25 pound mirror. So I was, I was over the moon with that one. And then I think I did put a little bit more bait out then. Also, because my right and rod wasn't really doing anything neither down in the margins. So I flipped and moved that over to the same spot. And that was it really, nothing happened. I woke up early thinking, why hasn't it happened? So redid the rods, but just put one rod back on the spot instead of both of them. And then I saw it, I seen a fish roll. So I just put a solid PVA bag on that one. <sighs> I don't know, 45 minutes later, away, straight on it. Uh, that was 24 pound mirror, stunning fish. So yeah, pinged it back out, same again. 45 minutes, pulls up tight and away again. That was about 23. As soon as I ping that fresh, fresh rig out, fresh stick on it, three fish in three hours, all 20s, all, all beautiful fish as well. So as first visits go, it was, it was very, very nice. Um, I was chuffed with the fact that I was, I'd moved then then to capitalize on it and catch another six fish um four twenties I was over the moon with. Talk me through the hook bait options then. We've got yellow ones. Mm -hmm. These are essential cell wafters, new caught dust ones. Smell. Smell tropical. Yeah, fruity sort of thing. Then we've got some sticky krill pink ones. Are they going to stink? Yeah, they're fishy ones. Now, yeah, fishy. Oh god. So I used these last time only because of local knowledge. There's a chap down in Peg Seven. Uh, he'd had a couple, and that's where I was going. And I said, "Oh, what are you catching them on?" And he said, "Little pink, uh, little pink wafters or little pink krill ones." They worked really well for me last time. And then these are just a similar sort of sticky bait signature pop-ups. Just put them in because they're small. There's a white one, there's a pink one, and there's this off-yellow one. So they're like a... Oh, they're nice. Yeah, they're like a more fruity one. And then we've got a friend of mine, Chris Barber. He produces these. Um, higher track specials. These are the original Mulberry. Uh, they're lovely them ones. Mm. More with Florentine. And then we've got the essential cell because that's what we're using uh, as free offerings. Mm, that, yellow, banana yellow again, small again. So there's a running theme, they're all small, yellowy, and then obviously the pink one because that was local knowledge, like I say. So can I choose which ones I want to use? Yeah, of course you can. I'd like to use these ones. Okay, one of those ones. Well, can I not use two out of these? Yeah, you can use two, different colours. You know, I'll use one of Chris's. Yep. And I'll use a pink one out of there. Yeah, pink sounds like sounds like a good idea. Okay. I think I'm going to go with a pink one, obviously, because I've done fish on last time, and then a little yellow essential cell, I think. Yeah. Once we decided on our hook baits, it was time to get the rig sorted. For this trip, we are back on the same rig as we were using on Taxmere. Uh, it's, as I said then, it's basically just the same as a Ronnie rig or spinner rig, but it's with the big O cut off the swivel and then fished fish with wafter or balanced or wafter hook bait. You'll have to teach me how to tie it. They're dead easy to be fair. It's probably the easiest rig in the world to tie. It is. All you've got to do is tie two knots and that's it. Well, I reckon I could manage that. Yeah, I think you could. It's, it's just so simple but so effective. As are most really good ideas. Gareth cast our rods out at about three o'clock. 
By six, the wind was beginning to pick up, but we'd still not seen any fish showing. Funny, isn't it? What's that? Oh. You'd think 200 fish in here, a lot of fish, isn't it? Mm. You'd think they'd show more. Unless they start showing later on tonight. Whilst the wind did begin to pick up, by eight, we still hadn't seen anything. And so, we began contemplating a change. So we're going to move one of the rods off the island. And we're trying to decide whether to move it to the right or the left margin. The wind's pushing down that way, so I think Gareth would prefer to go into the right margin. I don't know. Would you think it might be up better at the left margin because there's less pressure? Yeah, I feel like we've got an awful lot going on down that right side down there from this swim. Yeah. There's three rods down there already. Okay. And there's no one really to our left, is there? There's nobody in the next couple of swims up from us. Trouble is, we haven't really seen a lot going on, so... No. I feel like I've already got one rod off to the right. So yep. let's move this one, this left hand rod, let's yep. go in the left margin with it. Okay. If the wind's pushing them down and they're in the margins anyway, they're going to go past it. Oh yeah. Aren't they? <coughs> They'll probably move up and down the margins, won't they? Yeah. So, are we going to stick with the yellow, yellow pop up on that one? Yeah. <coughs> That's the mulberry. Mulberry, Chris's mulberry flower into Yeah. It? We'll just drop it over the... Drop it in the margin. With a small amount of bait over it. With a small amount of bait over it. Just enough for a bite. Just enough for a bite. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this. Shall we do it? Yeah. Let's go. I dropped my left hand rod in a few feet from the margin on the left. Threw a couple of scoops of bait over it and kept everything crossed for a bite through the night. Now, whilst I'd usually love an undisturbed night's sleep, on this occasion, I woke up feeling a little bit disappointed. I freshened all the rigs up first thing and moved Kate's left hand rod back up against the island for the last couple of hours before she had to go. <clears throat> Are you going to change anything in the next 24 hours? No, I don't think so. Aren't you? No. Not weird yet, though. Conditions. You reckon it's all been down to the weather? Mm. Yeah. I may try one really, really tight to the island on a naked chard. Just set the chard back about a foot. Fix the chard. So you're fishing right up against the island. Mm. Although we hadn't had anything yet, I felt confident this approach would pay off. Kate had to get back today though, to collect the girls and take them dancing. And I think at this point, we'd both given up on her chances. Until. Oh. <laughs> what time is it? 20 past eight. Could this be a new personal best? <laughs> Let's hope so. For Mrs. Nuttall. Lovely 17 pound mirror, 20 past eight in the morning on Friday. We'd given up hope and this guy shows up just off the island, my left hand rod. Beautiful. Go on, go on. There she goes. Unfortunately for me, that's just about it now. It's, well, it's nine o'clock, so I've got an hour before I've got to go. I've really enjoyed it, and actually, yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll try and do a little bit more. But for now, hopefully, 
Gareth will uh, nick a couple for us. After he's finished putting my bivvy away. <laughs> After Kate left, I changed my right hand rod over to a naked chod using the original mob hook bait that Kate had her fish on earlier. I fished it tight to the island and it only took a couple of hours before that bobbin finally pulled up tight. It didn't take long before this one weeded me right up. I ended up having to duck under the willow tree and eventually netted it in peg three. It was a beautiful 22 and a half pound mirror. Gareth got the same rig back out to the exact same spot straight after returning that mirror. 45 minutes later, that bobbin pulled up tight once again. Unfortunately, after a strange battle, it turned out that this £20 mirror was foul hooked. As with any foul hooked fish, he made sure the hook hold was properly treated before returning it. After licking his wounds, Gareth was eager to get back onto that spot because he felt confident the fish were patrolling the area. Like clockwork, 45 minutes later, that bobbin pulled up once again. This time, there was nothing strange about this one. And after a short battle, I netted a lovely 27 and a half pound common. <laughs> two. I'm pretty sure that's one of the big commons. 27 and a half pounds. Absolutely mint. There's only 16 of them in here. Over the moon with that one. It's really struggled the first 24 hours. It's just coming good now. Just like changing tactics. But uh, it's working now. I think the Chinese is here, so I better go and uh, get that. Sweet. Whilst I'm a big believer in consistency, sometimes it's worth trying something different when you're not getting the results you're after. All in all, our trip to Melbourne was a success. After a difficult 24 hours, a few little tweaks resulted in three fish banked between us in the end. Yay! Yay. Awesome. Well chopped.